Have the patient look directly at the light filament of the microscope. Using the Sinsky tool, mark the point of reflection on the cornea. Consider the optical center and not the center of the pupil. Centered on the point determined in the first step, mark the most curved meridian of the cornea and the optical zone where the Fahara ring is to be implanted. The incision should be made on the most curved meridian of the cornea. Keep the cornea dry during surgery. Proceed with the incision. Laminator until reaching the bottom of the incision. With a slight rotating movement to the left or right, open a small pocket in the intended direction of the tunnel. Reduce the tip of the Suarez spreader into the incision, widening with small movements the pocket created in step four. For the implantation of the two segments, do this procedure in both directions. It's very important that the pocket be created at the proper depth. The ideal positioning of the Fahara ring is directly related to and dependent upon this step. Vertically into the incision. Incline the guide into a vertical position such that it enters the tunnel approximately three millimeters. Introduce the Fahara spatula beneath the guide using the guide as a lift. Remove the guide. To make the tunnel, hold the spatula between the finger and thumb. With rotating movements, maintain the spatula within the optical markers. Use the tip of the spatula as a reference to guide it correctly in making the tunnel. Tunnel until the 180 degree mark and return. Utilize the same procedure with the other spatula to create the opposite tunnel. Do not permit the spatula to incline, maintaining it flat. Do not force the spatula upward or downward. Remove the Fahara ring from its case using the modified McPherson forceps. Place the ring over the eye, ensuring that the flat side of the ring is downward. Hold the ring with the McPherson forceps at one-third from the end to be implanted, introducing the ring into the tunnel beneath the guide. Remove the guide without releasing the ring. Using short movements, introduce the ring into the tunnel until only the tip and orifice remain exposed. Use the Sinsky hook in the orifice of the ring to push the ring into the tunnel. The ring should finally rest at least one millimeter of distance from the incision. Repeat this procedure for the implantation of both segments.